So everybody, welcome to Lake and Bethel. Once again, those of you who are here know me. Those who are watching online, my name is Sherwin Branson. I'm the pastor here at at Lake and Bethel, the church that values authenticity over hype. So, how y'all doing with this virus thing? Is everybody enjoying it? Not enjoying it? Having fun with it? You're not having fun with it? Sounds like somebody's having fun with it. There's some giggling going on. Uh, that's always a good thing. It, there's a, a lot of things going on. So are you just going nuts with it? or you know? I know some people have told me they are just simply going nuts. It's just difficult to deal with. Some people are frustrated, angry, hearing all kinds of things. And we don't know when it's going to end, which is... Uh, a hard thing to deal with. So we feel like we're losing our grip. Everybody seems a little punchy. I actually saw somebody punch uh, one of the fuel pumps at Wesco the other day. Frustrated with it. Punched the fuel pump. Seems silly. Hurts your knuckles. Why would you do that? But they were doing it. Frustrated with all those things. Confused. My mom is confused by it. She's 88 years old. She's shut in. She can't drive. She uh, has macular degeneration. And we have home health care. Take care of her. When I call her, she says, yeah, I just sit here by myself all the time. My relatives who are meat producers couldn't sell their animals because the processing plants were closed. So the price went down. Then the price went way up. And they, they're still losing money over it. Plus the stress of the disease. My wife works in a uh, family practice clinic. She's been working more, more hours, less patient contact, lots of phone nursing, but you all know she has no stress just because she's married to me. And uh, she's in Chicago today playing grandma. My son, who sells Harleys here in town, was laid off for 10 weeks. He's back to work and he's busy. But he says, boy, those Harley drivers are definitely sick of this virus stuff. My daughter in Chicago, who's busy all the time, she's a physical therapist, has to take extra precautions. Our granddaughter going into daycare. Man, it's really hard to go into that daycare. I tried to pick her up a month ago. and. I couldn't go in. They had to bring her out to me. And then Jamie, our 20-year-old, is a student at Grand Valley, and she thinks this virus is a blessing. She's happy about it. She's working extra hours. She works in a nursing home. She's right in the middle of it, gets tested for COVID weekly. And uh, she says, oh, this is great. I can do all my classes. She has finished microbiology online. So they don't have to go into class anymore, which means they don't have to clean the classrooms. But the tuition still went up at Grand Valley this year. But it's, she says it's, it's a wonderful thing. She's getting into the nursing program full-fledged this fall there, and uh, she likes it. But everybody's life is disrupted. People are punchy, they're irritable, there's less patience. Seems like we're losing our grip. Uh, it seems like these little minor breakdowns are common. Does the Bible say anything helpful about losing our grip? Well, I want to look at some selections from the 12th chapter of the letter to the Hebrews today. just want to give you a quick background on the letter to the Hebrews. It's written to Jewish Christians in Jerusalem who were thinking to give up their Christian faith because they were being highly persecuted by the Orthodox Jews of that town. Now, you know, like in Rome, the Christians were persecuted by the pagans, but in Jerusalem, they were persecuted by their fellow Jews. They were beat down. They were socially rejected. They had trouble conducting business. Nobody wanted, you know, we have to wear a mask to get into a store. They had to deny that they were followers of Jesus to even have... Uh, logical commerce taking place. They couldn't buy because of their faith. Nobody would buy or sell with them, and they wouldn't let their kids hang out with the, with each other. You know, they, they, Some were arrested, um, jailed, even executed. Some were killed by mobs. They were beat up, and they were losing their grip, and rightly so. 
thinking to return to Orthodox Judaism with all of its rules. That's why in the Hebrews chapter 8 it says, don't go back to following those laws. Jesus sets you free from that. Those laws are obsolete. They're soon going to fade away. Something that many American Christians do well to remember. But his point is, Jesus has made the Old Testament obsolete. That's the main point of the letter to the Hebrews. And you can make it through this. So we're going to look at chapter 12, kind of towards the end of the book today. This is what it says. And my PowerPoint's not advancing. There we go. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Now, this huge crowd of witnesses that he talks about in there is something that we neglect often. I thought of it a lot when my buddy Gloria Arter died uh, this week. And when I think about it often when I write funerals, because we so often say, oh, we'll never see them again. And Gloria is, uh, her daughter's expecting a baby. And she said, you know, the sad part is, well, she won't get to see that baby. I don't think so. The letter to the Hebrews talks about how those who have gone before us are watching us and cheering us on. I always feared my dad's supervision. I think he's watching me now. And maybe my great, great, great grandfathers who I've never met. But according to this, to the previous chapter of Hebrews, they're there and they're watching us. They're cheering us on. They talk to Jesus about us face to face. They are praying for us. So he says, with this great cloud of witnesses, get rid of then those things that slow you down. Get rid of your lousy attitudes. Get rid of anything that draws you away from God. Get rid of the sin, how you mistreat others, your lack of love. Get rid of these things and then run with endurance the race set before you. Toughen up. Get going on this. Then he tells us how. Next verse, very simple. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. So how do we get through what we're going through? Very simple. Underlined it. Keep your eyes on Jesus. It is that simple. He's the champion, as it said, who initiates our faith. We wouldn't even believe if he hadn't initiated it. If he hadn't tapped us on the shoulder, metaphorically speaking, we wouldn't even know who he is. He called us. He placed us in homes where, you know, we're exposed to the gospel. However, but it was his doing. He, re- he started it. We can only respond Keep your eyes on him, and you can get through anything. Then you'll graduate from this life with honors. And here it says that God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as dear children. The trouble you in isn't punishment. It's training. The normal experience of children. So this COVID thing, I don't, I don't personally believe that God caused it. I think the devil did. That's just my belief. But God can use it. That's your belief too. Good, man. Uh, you should be preaching this, not me. But um, the, the thing is that God can use it for our education. So don't drop out. No education is pleasant at the time. I remember how much I hated seminary first time I went through it. Bunch of these old, incompetent guys could barely stay awake through their own lectures, and I'm paying money for this? I thought it was awful. Today I realize that I was taught by deeply spiritual geniuses, 
And I wish I could go through it again because it was so valuable. But at the time, I hated it. That's a normal experience for children. Those of you who've had kids or those of you who used to be kids, which pretty much all of us remember learning how to ride a bicycle, how painful that was. I remember getting on a full-size bike. That's what I was going to learn it on. I crashed it so many times. I, just, I think I still have scars from it. And all kids go through that. It's not pleasant to learn how to ride a bicycle, but as soon as you ride it, you get good at it, then you buy Harleys. But you do fall and sometimes get hurt. When you get the hang of it, you can fly. It's not pleasant at the time, but in the end, it's worth it. Uh, verse 10, for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. Earthly fathers can really mess you up. We all know that. Even if they're trying their best. And some don't even try. But God's discipline is always good for us. And he helps us to share in his holiness, his differentness. He invites us to get off the treadmill of worry of this world and trust in him and enter into a life instead of serving Jesus. Verse 11, no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. See, discipline is not fun. And tough times are not fun. They are painful. But maybe God sees our struggles differently than we do. And maybe this COVID thing is a test. We don't know that. But what if it is? Are we going to pass the test and afterwards have the peaceful harvest? You know, we don't know why this is happening any more than that original audience of the letter of Hebrews could understand why they were being bullied because they followed Jesus. But it doesn't change the fact that this virus thing is happening. So the question I want to ask you is when it's over, are you going to be happy with how you handled it? Will you lose your grip or will you grow through this? Will it make you bitter or will it make you better? When I was just a little kid, the Vietnam War was raging. And one of the guys I knew, was seven or eight years older than me, got his draft notice. And he knew he was going to be sent to Vietnam like many others were. He did not want to go. I don't think anybody did. But I remember a World War II veteran who was my barber. I used to get haircuts. And uh, he uh, said to this kid as he was getting ready to leave, he said, make sure when you get out of that army, you're a better man than you were when you went in. And I think that's just really good advice for us with any challenge. Make sure we're a better person coming out of it than when we go in. Will we be a better person when this whole thing is over? And that's the question. So here we are, final verse from Hebrews 12 that we're using today. Take a, oh, not quite the final one. Take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Essentially, what he's saying is, is get a grip here. Take a new grip, a stronger grip with your tired hands. Strengthen your weak knees. Toughen up. Make a straight path for your feet, not just for yourself, but for others. The author says, so that the weak and the lame will not fall, but become strong. This virus thing is not just about you. It's not just about me. 
But here the author is reminding us that we have the ability to inspire others to cope well. So do it. I like this whole idea of losing your grip. Uh, This is not the original title, but the original title was not church appropriate. So Sally Legar changed it for me. But, you know, we can go ahead and lose our grip if we want to. We can go nuts. We can sink into despair. We can get cranky. But here's an idea. Instead of losing our grip, I'm talking to myself here just as much as I'm talking to any one of you. Instead of losing our grip, let's lose our gripe. Just add an E to the word. Instead, let's lose our gripe. Griping or gratitude, two ways to get through this thing. Complain constantly about the conditions, and the conditions are not right. Or we can focus on the good things that we have. That won't change anything that's going on out there, but it changes what's going on in here. And that's important. Things will be better. So for all of us, whether you're watching this on video or whether you're here in person today, you can freak out if you want to. It's okay. No one can stop you. Go ahead and lose your grip. See how that works for you. Or you can hang on to your faith. As the writer of the letter to the Hebrews says, strengthen your knees, be thankful for what you have. Keep your eyes on Jesus, and you'll come out of this thing a better woman or a better man than when you started. And that's what we all want. Let's hear the Lord's benediction. And now, in whatever you do or say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus, all the while giving thanks through him to God the Father. And may the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to be with you today and always. Amen. And as always, thanks for listening.